Hi, let's try to do this question related to Hooke's law. Try it yourself first. Pause the video now. Two thousand years later. Okay, so the part A is asking you to plot those data points to the graph paper, and so in this question, they are just being very nice to you that they didn't expect you to decide the axis because in some of the question in physics. Uh, they may provide you data like here and then they will also want you to plot the graph and also decide the range of the axis so what i mean is they will give you a blank graph paper and you have to decide okay so this is x axis for example but then you have to decide how to divide those grid into the range that is suitable so the normal rationale is that uh, what what you have to see is from the data table so here is zero to five at most and therefore when you try to divide this into the x axis then it should be zero to five that is covering most of the space and here they also make six but actually six is not useful so if you want to you can make uh, the last one as five and try to equally divide those things uh, one mistake will be if say for example you divide this further by saying oh this is ten this is eight six four two and say this is one then if this is how you set up the axis then you will be not in a very good position because at the end of the day you'll be only having the data point for like around this region and you are not going to use the right hand side of the graph paper so this would be terrible okay so this is something that you want to uh, bear in mind in the future when you try to plot a graph from scratch same for the y-axis because you are starting from the data point of 0 to 103 so that's why I think they have set a pretty good example that these axes go from 0 to 120 which is sufficient enough for presenting all the data but not going too far I mean an example of going too far could be uh, saying oh this would be I don't know 200 and then uh, 160 etc so then eventually again uh, what you have eventually will probably be this will be 120 and so the data point will be more like around here only instead of again the whole graph paper and so when you try to plot those data it will be so much harder and it will not be as accurate as well anyway back to here let's just follow their axis and uh, we'll try to plot the data and i think this is just very simple thing that uh, you have learned it in math also so uh, let me just do it now so one and here we have to be very careful this is 40 this is 20 and here i think is 10 grid you can count one two three four five six seven eight nine ten yeah so each of them will worth two uh, millimeter in this case so that means 21 will be half the grid okay maybe I, I think i need to zoom in it's probably easier if you do it on a piece of paper all right and next would be uh 40 for two newtons so this one is easy and again if you can have a ruler that will be so good as well so i'll recommend you to use a ruler to help you to do the alignment on my screen uh, i can actually do as well i can put it on my screen so that's something i can do as well and three newton is 51 okay so one two three four five so this is 50 you can actually write it if you if you if you want to that's okay and then three oh it's pretty hard to read i think it this this line yeah okay and so that will be here okay in the middle the next one is 82 okay 82 is okay it's probably this line uh but i can't see four Let's zoom in a bit more four is around here okay so this is a data point uh, i'll recommend you to use the cross because that will tell you a very precise intersection uh, some people use circle which is terrible or a dot right because when you draw a dot you can draw a dot that is really big right like like that big i mean i'm being exaggerated here but then that will represent a region rather than a very refined small point and lastly is 5 newton in 103 
five Newton this line and then this is hundred this okay right here okay so these are the data point that you have and the question told you that uh, do not draw the line yet because they will ask you to do later now part B asks you uh, there is an error and which result is it so if I were you I mean obviously we should all know that this is the one that is being the anomaly right because the other one appear to be one straight line so if you want to talk about this one uh, in fact the marking scheme will allow you to say the fourth data because this is literally the fourth data right uh, but then I, what I would say I think I would I would say uh, that result is the data point with the coordinate uh, that is 3 3 Newton right yeah 3 Newton with 51 so 3 51 then that is exactly like you, you can't argue because some people may don't may, may not count the first one so that will become the third instead of the fourth and I don't want to make like those like confusing arguments so let's just say data point uh, coordinate 3 51 Part C asks you to draw the line of best fit through the remaining point. So uh, here I don't have a ruler. Then I'll try to draw a straight line. So when you try to do it on your own paper, you should use a ruler. And it may not appear as a straight line. So when you draw it, uh, you would want to balance the data point uh, so that it is as close to the line as possible. Okay, I realize I can actually find a straight line from the word. So um, so you can drag like this. I mean, I can drag like this, and then I can adjust. Uh, luckily, the data points are pretty nice. That it, they really appear to be almost the same line. So, uh, but that I can see just now the second one doesn't really get onto the line. So I would like to balance it out so that it get close to each of these more consistently. Okay, and one more thing is. Uh, don't stop your line at the last data point right? because you're showing the general trend and therefore you can always extend your line further until the end of the graph paper. Part D, it asks us whether or not the spring is obeying Hooke's law. So uh, again, Hooke's law is referring to the equation that is F equal to Kx and that means the force and the extension has having a proportional relationship. And the answer is yes. And uh, we have to relate it to the graph. And so um, don't just say, oh, the extension is proportional to force. Uh, that's something you can say later on. But then the first thing I would like to say is uh, the line of best fit is a straight line. Okay, and that would means the extension is proportional to the force right or did they say um, more specifically the weight or oh, weight okay so I guess force is okay or you can say tension oh I just recall sorry that we can make it even more accurate uh, not only a straight line but a straight line that through the origin okay so let me teach you a bit of uh, mathematics so I mean you should all know that 0 0 is the origin and the line really passed through it and so when you talk about Hooke's law f equal to kx so that will be similar to a general mathematical um, formula or a graph that you may plot that is y equal to kx and this is referring to a situation where you have the line straight line that is really passing through the origin so the point I'm trying to make here is you could have a straight line but not passing through the origin okay an example could be like this okay this is also a straight line the green one is also a straight line but they're not passing through origin and so in this case that I believe you have learned in mathematics that the equation that you should describe is not just kx but not but instead uh, it could be kx or mx plus c so that is the y-intercept that you have 
So when we talk about proportional, proportional literally is referring to y equal to kx. So there's no y-intercept at all, or the y-intercept you may say is zero simply. So there's a difference between proportion and this y equal to kx or mx plus c. y equal to kx plus c here can only be set to be a linear relationship or linear line only and they are different. Part E. Describe how the graph may be shaped if the student continue to add more. So like I said earlier, uh, it cannot be infinitely adding and infinitely being a straight line. So eventually, um, it will reach a point that is called the proportional limit or even elastic limit. So what you can say about the graph is uh, it will become nonlinear. All right, or you can say it will bend. Okay, so that that will be the keywords uh, you are looking for. So of course you have to phrase this whole thing in a sentence instead of just putting down the keywords. Lastly, the student estimate if he hand 45 Newton on the string, the extension will be this one. Why this is unrealistic? Okay, so um, obviously this will go over the elastic limit or proportional limit. So you can say uh, 45 Newton is beyond the proportional limit and probably, probably it will break actually. Prob Probably the spring will break before 45 Newton. Okay, so here is the marking scheme for this question. So if you like to refer to it, you can pause the video now and check it yourself. That is all for the video and I'll see you again in the next video. Bye-bye.